Hey folks, welcome back to another video. So this one is more barricades for scattering on the tabletop. This time we're doing barbed wire. Uh, so for the first part, stage one, just take some of your pre-measured, pre-cut and pre-beveled bases from the large pile you cut out to begin with at the start of this series of barricades and basing. Take as many as you want you need. And then once you've got all you want, set them out, count out however many you want for each piece and then set about the next stage. For this one, should be fairly easy and quick to do. This again is another weekend length kind of project. Page two, and this is what you need. Matchsticks, everybody's favorite in the crafting world, matchsticks. Uh, for this one, all you need to do is just grab a handful and uh, start cutting. Roughly half uh, on each length of matchstick is what you want. And uh, in this case, I am using pre made shop bot barbed wire if you like. You can make your own, it's very easy. Many people do it. I've made it in the past, but this time I happen to have some shop bot lying around. So, with the matchsticks, all you want to do is roughly measure it to your barbed wire. In this case, Half works well for this size of barbed wire that I've bought, so just roughly match all your matchsticks in half, cut them up, and then make as many as you like. In my opinion, having half length matchsticks is uh, never a bad thing, so just half as many as you can uh, sanely do. And once you've got a big pile of half matchsticks, set them to one side, and then move on to the next stage. So stage 3, uh, for this one I've decided to hot glue them down, PVA works just as well so long as it's a, a, a tackier, quick drying PVA, uh, however I find hot glue works the best, for the results I've found anyway they works the best. So turn the hot glue gun on and now it's time to do a little bit of measuring out and you put out as many matchsticks on at the base as you want for your barbed wire display, in this case I'm going to use three posts, or matchsticks for the barbed wire and then if you have any extra you want to add on to the base for a little bit extra detail feel free I've put uh, an additional empty post standing up and I've glued on an additional post on this one in October to simulate a little bit of damage uh, and once you're done pull off any spider webby cobwebs and tails that are left and then move on to the next one once you've glued them all down it's on to stage four Stage 4, here we go, once you've got all your upright posts and any damaged posts or battlefield scattered damaged areas you want, uh, it's time to do the very vitally important stage, the test fit of all your pieces of barbed wire, so you just want to pull out and extend your coil or however much you've made, your pre-coiled or handmade, pick a length, do any test fits, change it about, put any bends or kinks in wire or any cut sections of areas that may be pre-cut, test them on, figure out where they sit, get them to kind of get the feel for it. Once you do one, test fit the rest, pick any system or layout you like. I like uh, simple little sections of wire, just a little bit of mess, a little bit of bend, a little bit of roughly hanging on posts and you can then take it off for the next stage and set it to one side. And you'll only need it again once every other stage of this build is finished. So stage 5, here we go. Time to move over to your painting area, table, put down a bit of paper or, or a cover over your normal workspace, whatever you like to do. And for this stage, just take off the barbed wire. And then for these, it is the same textured house paint that I have used to base coat everything else in the barricade series. And with these ones, it is not important in any way how much you slap this stuff down. 
Uh, you don't need to be tidy, it doesn't need to be a pretty job for this one. You can get it on the posts, you can get it on the uprights, uh, you can leave blotches and patchy areas on the base. It will make it look like a bit more churned up and war torn area of the base to make this barbed wire area look like it's seen some foot traffic and action over time as it's been built and destroyed and rebuilt and fought over, which I think adds a little bit of character uh, to the long run. It's not a hugely obvious thing, but it's the little details that sometimes just make that much difference. And then once you've got these all painted, set them aside to dry and then we can move on to the next step. Stage 6, here we are, time to get the first base coat down of the actual colours and for this it's going to be the same old dark brown method to start off with your darkest colour and then you just want to paint this on all of the bases and all of the upright matchsticks. You want to cover everything with this, just slap it on, nice and thick coat and that will be your nice base layer. Once you get that done on all of them, again, set them aside to dry and you'll move on to the next stage, which is why when making a lot of these barricades I find it best to do batches of them that way you can do all of this in one big stage. You can do all your basing, then you can do all your base coating and all your painting gets done at the same time and if you're doing a big batch by the time you finish the end of the batch, the start of the batch should be dry and ready for you to keep going with the next set. So stage 7, here we go. Time to pick out some details. You want to come in with a lighter brown or a beige kind of colour and then pick out all of the individual matchstick posts that you've glued down, even battle damaged ones, just for some differentiation in the colour scheming of the bases. Uh, it doesn't need to be particularly pretty at this stage if you get some paint overlap here and there. At this point it's not, uh, it's not the end of the world. It'll be hidden and covered up and blended in in a couple of the later steps. And once you go through all the posts are done, set them aside again, work your way through the batch, and then once they're dry, start on to the next stage. So, stage eight, time to get the dry brush out again same big old makeup brush as always and then come in with the same mix of lighter browns, beiges, khakis, black, uh, very very sometimes even white depending on uh, if you're doing the desert -y theme and the texture to the paint scheme. Just to highlight and give a little bit of texture and differentiation on these bases, show them a little bit of love, make them look a little bit more natural underneath all the flocking that you put on later and then once you've gone through them all of however much of a batch you're making these should be dry fairly quick and at the end, by the time you're done you can move straight on to stage 9 Here we go, stage 9 Time to get out the watered down PVA once again and your chosen flock of choice for whatever scheme you're going for. Uh, this time I've gone for a very limited patchy grass effect to leave a lot of the churned mud and ground effect of the dry brush showing through just to emphasise the well worn and trodden nature of the grass where it's been worn away or damaged or turned over in time, so just sprinkle on your little bit extra, pick your wee patches and then set them aside to dry. Once this is dry they are pretty nearly done at this stage in the game.
Stage 10, here we go. Very, very near the end now. So what you want to do is replace the barbed wire onto all the uprights. Uh, play around with it, make sure you get it in the place where you want. Get the nice look you want. And then just take some super glue. And just drop a dab over every little bit where a bit of barbed wire seems to connect with one of the matchsticks. And that is enough to hold it in place through pretty much all the usage that uh, any of the barbed wire I've ever made has been put through on the tables. And then once that's done, take them over to your spraying area and we will get the final stage done. So for your final stage, once you get this super glued all down, uh, is the sealant, which again is just some very watered down PVA, a little bit of varnish in, holds the flock and helps with that barbed wire a little, and then once that's dry, you're good to go for the table. Here's some pictures of it in action on the table, and uh, if you like what you see, remember, like the video, subscribe, tell your friends, and I shall see you next week, folks, and I hope this inspiration keeps you going with some of your builds. Thank you.